Hey guys. So I just noticed that on these Rings of Powers episodes that I'm watching, they have these inside the episode or like an episode recap. What do they call it? Um, yeah, inside the episode. And I haven't checked any of these out. This one is eight minutes long. This is covering episode one. Now, so far, I've watched episode one, two, and three. So why don't we check this out together? <laughs> this is inside episode one. Let's get the thoughts of the actors and, and what everyone says. Let's see. He's obviously such an iconic figure in Tolkien lore. This season, we're going to get to see Sauron out in the open, making everything happen. Who is this man? Who is this man? There's uh, the High King, whatever his name is. Uh, what is the High King's name? I've already forgotten it. Mr. Filled with Swiss cheese, soy cut king. Ah, I forget his name. I want to say it's not a Lindiel. That's one of the guys in Numenor. I'll remember it later. Oh, here it is. Gilgalad. Ah, I was on the tip of my tongue. He is my man. He is so Inside the Rings of Power. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh boy, here we go. Who is this um, lady? I guess. You never know nowadays, but... I am joined by two actors whose characters couldn't be more opposite. Welcome, Benjamin... Hold on, is that the girl who was on Supernatural? You know, the girl who... I don't think that's her. That looks just like her. She was on Supernatural. She teamed up with Sam and Dean. She was kind of that nerdy girl. And she ended up getting killed off. She showed up in like season five or six. Look at these guys. Look at that look that they're giving each other. Is that her? Walker, who plays High King Gelgalad, and Charlie Vickers, a.k.a. Sauron. No, I don't think that's her. Thank you. Benjamin, how did it feel to put these elf ears back on? It feels like coming home. <laughs> I know that sounds goony, but... It does sound goony. The elf ears on Gilgalad are horrible. They're worse than everyone else's because they're huge. They look like bat ears. I made fun of it quite a bit in that first episode. They're massive. If you ever look at them in the show, they don't look right at all. We are such a nice group of people, and we've known each other so long that bringing the band back together is a, a breath of fresh air. He looks normal. He looks so much better Here with the beard. we are back in Lindon, and one of the great things about a new season is having new characters and brilliant... Check him out. This is his armor. I haven't seen him. Is that his normal getup? Look at all those people there. Actors to portray them, like this one. <laughs> Mr. Ben Daniels. Hello. A lot happens in the first season, but the, the second... second... Him having being shaven like that makes him look so soft. Like, he really gives across this really soft kind of um, kingly... Like, he... I don't know, man. Some people can pull it off, and some people, I guess, can Season, it really feels like the gloves come off and if you know the source material you know you got a lot of ground cover they're wearing masks Charlie, what was it like for you stepping back into Halbrand's shoes now that your true identity is out there it's a pretty special feeling i mean for me it's quite different because i'm sort of coming back as almost a different character yeah there's that sequence yeah you're coming back as the symbiote venom the goo symbiote oh man <sighs> It spans many years, showing Sauron recovering from Adar's betrayal, rebuilding his physical form, and finally intersecting with Galadriel in the flashback to season one. What did you think about that being like the opening? When they first I thought it was stupid. If, <laughs> if you want to know what I think, I thought it was stupid. <laughs> the, the effect on Venom the symbiote looks cool. This gooey thing of worms it looks cool um that's about it we didn't need that entire thing i made a video go check out the video it's of how they should have started season two the opening that they should have done what it could have been is what the video is titled i think and i think my idea is a lot better than this <laughs> me the idea i think they called it a blob yeah and it's not it's not really no, a blob it's, so it's more like a collection of, more of worms to have that whole prologue bit tell the backstory of Sauron, which we really already knew, to see. But, but it's, it's also like, like the characteristics of it are kind of beautiful, beautiful. dark, sinister, mm. and vicious. Did you have a movement coach when you were the Mormon blob? <laughs> yeah. Man, that may be her. I really, man, I don't know. 
Now, looking at her from this angle, maybe she's just a little bit older now. There's a girl who was on Supernatural, and I love that show. And she, I think, was a lesbian in the show, yeah. But she was an interesting character, a pretty decent character, and then she gets killed off, and it really pissed Dean off. Like, he felt like he really let her down. Of course he did. But she was kind of written off. She was a part of, like, one of the episodes involved um like uh the scarborough fair thing you know and, and dressing up and stuff like that and uh, she helped defeat some of the leviathans it was in the season they introduced the leviathan as the villain i think she's introduced that might be her i'm not sure what her oh uh, yeah, yeah sure. it took me many you know many many weeks that. <laughs> <laughs> season one i always was trying to do was just to try play every moment genuine with Halbrand and everything else was kind of there in the writing because if you're kind of winking at the camera or like twirling your moustache you start to think oh there's something going on here but it's I like that on second rewatch you can see that there's layers to it no we always eyes, knew no one else could have I will never forget that and I'll see to it that no one else does either Sauron left Galadriel we always knew that he was Sauron we knew before the show came out it was Sauron everyone was saying it there was no mystery behind but she was really his partner in a lot of ways yeah and even in my mind i'm like it was oh, his love was interest a genuine connection between you and galadriel but it was there it's yeah. always mind games with you yeah i think any person that he works with is all for his own benefit so he worked with galadriel because i think he thought that she could give him something she could provide him a lightness mm -hmm. to him that's not true they've spun it to be that way for season two now but for season one it really came across more like, because what they've done is they've trying to rewrite it like Sauron. That's why they had this intro in season two. They're trying to rewrite it as Sauron was manipulating everyone the whole time and, and always in control. No, no, no. In season one, he had actually turned over a, a new leaf and Galadriel turned him back to be evil. Like that's really what happened. And then in season two, they're like, mm. <laughs> let's let's rewrite this it's darkness and spin you know, it a different way his most basic, basic form of the blobbiness yeah but he's, he's parasitic person. in that like anything that comes by if he can use it he's going to take it elrond just informed me your companion this halbrand was not who he claimed yet you chose to withhold this from him and calabrimbor who is this man man he's so Gil-galad handles Galadriel's revelation that Halbrand is Sauron in a really awesome way. It's kind of like this Not an awesome way. It's a dumb way. He should have locked her up. <laughs> he should have threw her in prison. He should have said, "Really? You help you this guy you've been searching for a thousand years and you almost bang the guy? <laughs> You're going to jail." Throat noise like Oh yeah. I've been asked this was... before. It, it I'm actually saying an elvish word. I, I want people to start using it. Like what I you use it, make... yeah, I use it and what I'm like it? ah grach grach. How do you yeah. think that revelation changes your character's dynamic with Galadriel? I, I mean, it they doesn't. just keep messing up. You can only tell people what they should do so many times. Well, Elrond takes the ring and he comes across Hold on. Oh, Does gosh, that cliff Okay, what a tantrum. no, grach grach. <laughs> He comes across here in this interview not entirely unlikable, like the actor here, Mr. Benjamin Walker. In the show, he, I don't think he's good in the show, but in this interview, he's coming across as a regular guy. And then in the show, I think Halbrand works a little bit better, but Charlie Vickers here in the interview is coming across not really good. It's like reversed great is that everyone has a point of view and it's justified there's nobody who's really in the wrong it's just a very comp no. <laughs> no i take back everything i said no 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 let me stop you right there no um galadriel is not justified in anything she does She's worse than Sauron. She's the devil, man. She, I, do I need to get into it again? We've hashed it out, but no, they're not justified. No one's decisions are justified. Certainly not in season one. You can get behind some of what Elrond does in season two, but no. Complicated situation. 
when it's first created, you don't actually Look at that. know what it is. It's mm -hmm. like Oppenheimer, you've created something that you don't fully understand. And so it is that complicated. Yeah. And no, it's not. It doesn't so make any sense. Frankie all the time. Frankie. Why, the whole purpose of making them was to use the Mithril to save the elven race in order to power the tree battery. That's why they made him. They knew. Uh, he knew why he made him. But brooding. Brooding. Go get that. Brooding. Go get that. Did you look that up on the internet? No. Um, what does but it mean? It was sent to me. We don't have to talk about what you know, it means. You might not. I'd rather not. <laughs> the light of the Eldar has faded. Which doesn't make any sense. Long removed from the hearth. You had a song in this episode. You were actually quite amazing. Are oh, you a uh, trained singer? Is that clapping in the background? Did I just hear a group of people start clapping? Are they clapping for this interview? Yeah, I'm, I'm a song and dance man. When I saw that our High King was going to sing in Elvish to mark the moment you when grew his up people in your are mouth. leaving Middle Earth, I'm not sure if there's a more Tolkienian thing to do at that moment. I don't know about that. Um. Yeah, songs are important. I think the song, when I listened to it, it wasn't the worst thing in the world. Who is this? Leith McPherson? It just says self. She's playing herself? Why didn't they give her title? Like, a uh, leader of the sound coordination or something like that. Audio. What, what's the official title? I don't know. He doesn't have a bad voice. The song voice. is a funeral dirge, and it's that kind of a song about the passing of time and loss. At this point, we're kind of she's kind of hot. Doom. She is. We not. have to leave and return. I think the song sounded okay. I think that's one of the positive things in episode one. I did like. It didn't stick out too much, but I thought it sounded okay. Turned to Valinor and abandoned Middle Earth to its own devices. It's unique because it's an Elvish. Oh God! Look at all these soy cut. I swear they. <laughs> they have so feminized. This is what I paid attention to. I wasn't... The song was playing. This shot right here, I was just like, <laughs> look at those people. My gosh. I, I, I already made fun of it in my other episode, but I mean, just like... Like, like, just... Oh my gosh. No testosterone. No masculinity anywhere to be found. That's a first for me, but... Bear wrote the music, and Leith McPherson's our voice and speech genius. So, I mean, I felt really supported. He's got a decent voice. Oh, don't do that again. <laughs> when I'm such a dick. <laughs> I need to stop. I'm sorry, and I need to stop pausing it. We'll never get through it. I'm trying to be transformative, though. Set design is so vast. How immersive does a scene like that feel for you? Is it easier or harder to act? I think it's easy. I think that's the beauty of working on something like this, because there's so many hours of craftsmanship and so much dedication put in from the crew. You get to walk onto these sets that just do half the job for you. This one turned itself... No, see, that's where your whole opinion is that's a bad outlook for an actor to have you walk onto a set and half your job is done no 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 you're the actor you're the one who is bringing the heart the story the 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 thing that connects with us you know the personality into it this it's like well we rely on the special effects and the scene and all that kind of stuff and 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 the atmosphere and the set it's like you shouldn't rely on that stuff i don't think they should didn't he just walk in there as like, no, 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 regardless if it's a, a beautiful set or if we're just sitting in a car or something simple, it doesn't matter. I'm going to just act my heart out or something like that. It's like half your job is done for you. I don't know about that. In Lord Father. Can you talk about some of those scenes at the camp? One of them comes to mind uh, when Sauron has his face in the dirt. Yeah, I remember it really well. We were in a tiny little set where you could hardly stand up. And I had a, the chain around my neck was like a proper chain. That moment when I lie down, I remember we did a few variations of it with Charlotte because I say, 
I vow to serve the Lord of Mordor. In that moment, Adar thinks, oh, sweet. Yeah, he's wearing allegiance to me, but I'm like, no. Not it's so actually a bit of an yeah. oversight from Adar. We all picked really. up on yeah. it. Yeah. Thanks. He took his eye off the ball. But there is something he gets in what's that coming scene, to it. Yeah, yeah, where I think that, and Sam and I spent a long time talking about it, where there's almost an acknowledgement that Adar knows that Halbrand is Sauron. Because in the opening scene, you see their relationship and there's, there's almost this kind of supernatural connection between them that they must understand each other on another level. What? You can't kill me. In time, you will beg me to. That, that makes no sense. There's no way Adar, if, he, if Adar even suspected that he was Sauron, he never would have let him go. He would have killed him right there. Charlie Vickers just said they understand each other and he suspects in this moment, Adar suspects that maybe this is Sauron. No, he doesn't. That's not true at all. Not, nothing in those scenes. Even Adar seemed completely uh, clueless as to who, who Halbrand was. That's a weird thing to say. Do you feel bad? that you got everybody to crush on you as Halbrand, and now you've revealed yourself to be absolutely the worst. <laughs> Do you feel guilty at all? Yeah, but there's still something I think something that's a good exciting. lesson to learn. Be careful, don't get sucked in by pretty faces. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, both of you, for joining thank us. Thank can't wait to this. see where your characters go on through season two. Thank yeah, you. I can't wait so either. Thank you Thanks, so much. Guys. Thanks, everyone. Got his hand on his cross. That's it for this episode. Seven more epic episodes of the Rings of Power to go. And here oh, whoa, well, boy. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> well, that's it for this episode, this video. <laughs> I think that's a good way to end it. I'm going to react to the other ones, too. These uh, inside, what are they called? Inside the episodes. Should be fun. <laughs> Guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Oh, boy. Thanks so much for watching. Please hit the like button and the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified whenever my new videos drop. Goes a long way in helping out the channel, and I do really appreciate it. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and have a great freaking day.